we're standing here in Winchester, Kansas today. This is the family farm that I grew up on. Uh, my granddad bought this in the 50s and my brother and I had a chance to buy it from my mom's family here in the last 12 months and we really appreciate them giving us that opportunity. Growing up in the 80s on the farm was challenging at times, but as I look back, it was some of the most enjoyable time of my life. In the 80s, things were really tough. We didn't know at all how we were going to succeed. We didn't have a whole lot. We didn't have much, as a matter of fact. When he was a little kid, he was always outside, playing in the dirt, building things. He was always with his dad, whatever whatever they were working on. He was doing it too. We, did, we never did have a loader tractor, so we threw every ounce of silage on by hand and off by hand. And there's a lot of mornings we'd get up and feed two loads of silage before we would go to school in the morning. And as a teenager, you don't appreciate that, but you kind of learn over time that uh, that creates a work ethic and, and it kind of helps you appreciate work and enjoy it and find some joy in it. This is the house that I grew up in. It's a little 1600 square foot, three bedroom house that there was six kids and my folks that grew up in that house. So lots of memories there. When he was little, he would go off with his dad to a sale or whatever, where there were a lot of guys spend the day. And when he came home, he thought he was the boss. And it'd take me a couple hours to knock him down a little bit and reframe him to where I was the boss. You know, I think one of the things that we get to choose is our attitude and how we approach things. And that's one of the things that, as I think about the people around me today and who we go looking for, it's people that have an attitude that have some belief and, and believe they can do things. And uh, that has to be grown over time. I don't, I don't know that that's just naturally given to us all the time. But we get to choose whether we're going to be positive or negative every morning when we get up. And I think one of the things that I believe that I owe my people is to have a positive attitude and always believe that there's a way to get through things and solve problems and, and really never give up. I am most proud of him that he has stuck by his faith, raised his family that way. Uh, we just did an interview with a customer here a while back that's 98 years old and while we were talking to him he made the comment that he doesn't understand how anybody could be in agriculture and not have faith and as you think about growing up in a small community where everyone had to rely on each other this church was a major part of that. I just look back and a lot of the foundation that was put underneath me was built in this church here and Sunday school and Sunday evening activities and youth group meetings and all the different relationships that got built there. But I just really appreciate what the good Lord has done for me to put me in a position to be able to share that with others now. We had four dealerships in this county growing up. Three of them were International Harvester, or Case IH, and one Agco dealer. And by 1986, there were none left. And there still hasn't been a, a farm equipment dealership in this county since then. So that kind of left a mark on me and made me think about how you build a business that can stand the test of time. And then you can look at obstacles as a problem or you can look at them as an opportunity. And with a lot of what I get to do today, it's problem solving and figuring out better ways to do things. In a role like I'm in where, you know, whether it's 200, 500 or 1,000 employees, What's my responsibility to help take care of them? And from a customer standpoint, we consider our customers to be partners and really thinking about how do we do what's best for them all the time. 